What's up, YouTube? What's going on, guys? So today, we're in the gym. We're over here, Iron Club. I got Swole Fester behind the camera. He's filming for me. I'm gonna be showing you both of our workouts today. We're both doing a sim similar variation for our squat that I think is actually probably one of the best assistance exercises for low bar squatters, and that is the high bar squat. And a lot of people are gonna be like, whoa, blow my mind more, Brendan. Like, I've never heard that before. But I actually wanna talk about the details as to why a high bar squat, from a very intricate standpoint, has great carryover to low bar squat from a biomechanics standpoint and just from uh, injury prevention and a bunch of other things but really like the strength overload you can get from a high bar I credit a lot of that to my squatting success the two main things that I actually credit to my squat looking a lot better nowadays than it used to in the past when I had really shit form were high bar and front squats and today we're going to talk about the high bar squat we're also going to go over um, my macro cycle moving forward or, or excuse me my meso cycle moving forward and my overall macro cycle plan a, a, a loose general plan going into my meets I'm competing uh, I think in December with Kristen, my girlfriend, she's gonna be competing at the same time and we also got Swole Fesser going that same month. So we're gonna just go over a bunch of stuff. We're warming up on the bar right now uh, and I'm doing some warm up stuff in between. I'm gonna show you guys that as well. Guys, a lot of people tell me they don't have time to do the warm ups, that popular just warm up on the bar stuff that's been going around lately. I think one of the big main reasons is people, they find their workouts take too long. This is definitely a part of powerlifting. You're gonna have long workouts, but if that's you, do your warm ups in between your working sets. So I'll actually usually start on the bar and just kind of warm up by like stretching out in the hole. And once I get moving and get some reps under me and I just kind of feel the squat out, then I go do some of my activation, my stability and my mobilization exercises off the bar, doing some of my hip stretches and some of my uh, bracing patterns and things like that. Then I get back on the bar and I start actually trying to brace into the movement, building tension, but I'm still just kind of moving, just trying to get some blood flow down. So I go from doing the first set kind of stretched out to the second set actually in position, and then before you know it, I'm starting to get reps that are looking really explosive. And once that's happening, then I get off the bar and I, I add a little bit of load. So I usually do like three warm-up sets with just the bar and some of my activation and mobilization drills in between. Then I add a plate, I do the same thing, and I'll usually do like two or three sets at each plate until I start getting near acclimation weights. So once I'm in that high 300 pound range, then I'm usually just doing about one set um, at each weight as I increase and acclimate, but all the way up to that like 350 pound-ish range, I'm doing like two or three sets at each weight just to feel it out and build tension and warm up more. And if you do this right, it should only take maybe like 15 minutes for you to warm up through your whole warm, warm up sets and like all your mobilization drills. Stay tight, shoulders back. There you go, fight into that. It's all about that back. Good, keep fighting that position. Yeah. go how did that feel so as far as like it's supposed to be an rp6 as far as the actual rpe probably a little bit less than that but because i was so focused on really maintaining position upper back tightness yeah really squeeze attention the bar that's probably where i need to be because if i went up anymore i wouldn't be able to maintain that today i'm really trying to focus on just maintaining position and tension there we go all right guys you just saw this man stop set how did it feel like that? Like that. <laughs> so this guy, he's over here dying. I'm making him talk after he's done. He stops at and two or three. Two, two, my two back of his down back down sets, sets well. of seven <laughs> high bar. 
Uh, I'm about to get to my top set. I'm slow, I'm old, I'm broken, so it takes me a while. <laughs> but anyway, um, I want to explain the difference between why we programmed High Bar for Marcellus and why we programmed it for me. I'm going to explain the actual, um, like, like the intricate details of what a High Bar trains a little bit later, but I'm going to talk about movement deviations and kind of why we're giving them to him and me because it's very different reasoning. So you want to explain why we gave you High Bar this meso cycle? Yeah, so pretty much, guys, if you watched either like the last video on my channel or his, I can't remember them. I'm too tired to think. But basically what I, my issue is on my low bar con specific squat is keeping my upper back nice and tight, keeping my lower back neutral, and just maintaining a nice upright position, especially when I get into the hole, my lower back flex pretty hard, I lose tightness in my upper back. So what I'm focusing on right now with my high bar squats is just that, maintaining a nice upright position, really trying to squeeze the bar, tension well to keep my elbows down, keep my upper back nice and tight, and keep my lower back neutral. That's the main thing that I'm focusing on with my top sets and my back down sets. And so I'm gonna explain why the upper, the high bar squat actually targets that upper back a little bit more uh, than the low bar squat a little bit later. I'll, I'll explain the science behind it. But for him, you'll see in his top set how we had him really fighting his shoulders back, and each rep I was cueing him to stay, retracted and depressed in his scapula. For him, when he squats, especially his fatigue sets in, whether it's low bar or high bar, you start seeing his back give. That never happens to me. Like, I've only had that happen on a high bar squat, and it's actually because I'm so good at staying in position. I know that sounds backwards, but I'm gonna explain that again later. So that's why we're giving it to him, for rigidity in the torso. For me, I have high bar squats for my adductors and my quads. I'm, I'm very externally rotated, very hip dominant, very posterior dominant. I'm duck footed, I have retroverted hips. Everything about me screams like out here. Like my knees are always out to my ears. I squat kind of wide and more knees out. Uh, so the high bar, especially if I wear a heel while I'm squatting, allows me to get a lot of adductor stability and strength as well as quad strength as I travel my knees a little bit more far forward. I purposely wear a heel when I use high bars if I can use the heel, and I really get that quad activation. For me, my limiting factor is almost never my back in a high bar squat. It's always gonna be my quads and my core. For him, it's gonna be his upper back. You can see how hard it is for him to stay in place. Yeah. For me, that's not difficult. I just fight into it and I stay there. And I don't think I've ever had an issue with like feeling like, oh, my quads are giving out ever. on me, ever on a squad, which is pretty ironic because if you would look at it, you would think that like your quads have you get to go, my back has me get to go, but it's the exact opposite. It doesn't matter about muscular size. It matters all. about like your, your uh, natural strength dominances and exactly. your movement patterns. And for him, he cues very knees forward He's very quad centric in his squat. Me, I'm very back. I use my posterior. And so I use the high bar to kind of contribute to my low bar squat. But that's the cool thing about the high bar is if you know how to program it, it's very universal. Very but the versatile. problem is people don't know how to cue it. So we're going to talk about cues later. But for instance, with uh, Marcellus, we got him cueing shoulders back and down. He's very much thinking about his torso on the high bar. For me, I'm thinking about my legs and how I'm moving my legs in space. We're going to get back to the workout, guys, and keep filming. So I'm building up. This is, uh, I think, 374 375 I can't remember with the kilo bar somewhere around there um, I'm babying it today I'm doing tempos I actually didn't prescribe a tempo for myself uh, but I'm doing that today just because I'm at the end of a training block and I'm actually using this last part of the week to pivot into my new training cycle where I will be doing high bars on this day so today I'm taking it really easy because I've been dealing with this patellar strain that keeps like coming back and I can feel it kind of flaring up. So instead of like pushing it today and then having the next block start off with some pain, I'm taking it easy. So I'm probably not gonna do anything too impressive. Um, but again, going back to what Marcellus was saying, like we don't, we don't necessarily wanna uh, just focus on moving the weight from point A to point B. We need to like cue our body in certain positions and think about what we're trying to train. My best high bar ever was a, a beltless sleeveless. So it was completely naked, no belt, no sleeves. Uh, pause 495. And it was like RP9. And then I've also hit, I think, 465 or 455 for like eight or seven, something like that. Uh, and that was after doing a shit ton of volume. So my high bar is like pretty strong and up there, but I'm not necessarily always trying to push just maximum loads. We want to load as much as we can, but into the positions we're trying to train. And for me, I'm really working on getting my adductors and quads to fire. And today I also am taking care of the knee. So as the block progresses, I'm going to try to progress this lift, but I'm also focusing on position more than like maximal load, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do the set.
All right, guys, so doing my uh, high bar squats, like I said, after that first set, I was just kind of going for a tempo, finding a groove. This is the first time I've done high bar in a long time, and I'm dealing with that patellar strain, so I'm kind of like playing with my reps as I go with the foot position. You can see I was trying different things. I tried one set in flats, another set in heels. I was like moving different, and I think I found something that's working for me. But now again, because I'm trying to target those like adductors and the quads a little bit more, and I'm trying to have that carry over to my squat, I'm gonna make that the, the high bar really focused on that kind of movement. So the cues I'm utilizing are kind of, I'm loading like knees forward in the first portion of the squat, and then as I continue to descend down, I'm loading into that uh, kind of externally rotated position. And that's really gonna tension the adductors and quads. Now, I normally wouldn't advise someone to change their natural squat movement pattern uh, until they get very kinesthetically aware of their body and they're able to kind of control their body in stable manners in something that might be changing the way you like recruit fibers in a movement pattern. So for instance, like in a high bar, just high bar squat, how you know how to squat, if that makes sense. Typical brace, whether you do low bar or high bar, movement in the hips and knees, relatively the same. The only thing that's gonna uh, change is really the position on your, your, the position of the bar on your back is gonna force different patterns, but you still wanna cue everything the same. Once you get more advanced, you can kind of change your movement patterns in little ways to target something that you may not have been um, you know, targeting before with your typical squat pattern. So like with Marcellus, we had him really focus on his torso position, and that's something everyone should focus on. But he's so advanced that he doesn't need to think about his hips and knees too much. If you're more of a beginner, you're gonna to need to think about that. Me, I'm really trying to load into those adductors in that stable kind of forward to back position on the way down, and then rotate into it, and it fires my quad so much more, especially when I wear the heel. So that's kind of what I was doing with the squat there. Now I got some accessory work, and I'm gonna splice that over the screen, because I just finished that as well. I was doing uh, some Bulgarian split squats, pretty heavy actually, I got up to seven pounds and you can see on this too I'm actually purposely doing these a little bit more um, wider than I normally do and trying to load the adductor again both in a stretch and uh, when I come into that concentric phase I'm twitching that knee kind of inward purposely now again if you're more of a beginner or early intermediate don't change the pattern away from how you normally move in like a squat this is basically a single leg squat but because I'm a little bit more advanced I'm able to try to purposely you know recruit my adductor in this pattern and so I'm doing these Bulgarians a little bit wider and purposely letting that knee actually travel and stay inward throughout the movement especially on the concentric phase and target those adductors after that, I'm doing some oblique crunches, some single arm oblique crunches. This is gonna get my hip flexor and my obliques and really just my um, core on one side to fire extremely hard and to stabilize. What you'll notice about this day in my training is it's very centrated around bringing up everything I'm bad at, which is like oblique, core and adductor, basically everything that's more interior dominant, more knee forward, more like flexion based, th um, hip flexion, things that I'm not good at. I'm very externally rotated naturally, I'm very strong in extension patterns, and I'm strong in my posterior chains. So I'm kind of pulling away from that with all my accessory work, and this is kind of how you want to set up your secondary days based on hypertrophy um, for those like movement patterns that you're really weak in and those muscle groups you're really weak in. So for me that's adductors, core, obliques, the things that kind of bring me in this way. After that, um, I also have some more accessory work, I'll kind of show that. And at the end of this video, I'm probably gonna do this at home so you can hear the, the voiceover a little bit better. I'm gonna talk about really the difference between a high bar and low bar squat and how to um, choose what variation you should be doing and why the high bar really reigns supreme in my opinion as one of the best carryovers to your squat. And it's something I think everyone should do if you know how to program it uh, properly. All right guys, back at home, I wanted to do this portion of the video where I talk about the high bar squat and the intricacies of all the different ways it activates uh, the muscles in the body compared to low bar squat. And also um, just kind of an explanation of why high bar squats can fix multiple problems and kind of how to program it and what to think about when you are programming this and why I think it's a generally a very amazing exercise for everyone to do in the off season and it can have great carryover to many problems that you can fix in your movement patterns and muscular weaknesses. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of go all in on the high bar and I wanna do this at home instead of in the gym so you could hear me a little bit better. Now, first off, I don't wanna get into the biomechanics too much. I actually have a very old video on that, but Greg Knuckles has done a great job of explaining this in an article, so I'm gonna link that in the description box. Uh, but to kind of summarize, essentially when we're talking about the high bar squat versus low bar squat, um, really the largest change between those two is gonna be on the thoracic uh, extensors demand. So when we look at the squat from a side view, when that bar moves up the back a little bit more, we see a larger increase in moment arm on the hip extensors, 
Uh, sometimes the knee extensors, and that has to do with depth, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the thoracic extensors and just the low back extensors, really everything sees an a increase um, when we go into a high bar squat position. Basically, when we look at those moment arms, they all uh, increase. However, the thoracic extensors get the largest percentage increase overall when we go a high bar squat, which is really why uh, the high bar squat is very difficult to keep over the midfoot and you'll feel oftentimes, especially if you have a weaker posterior chain and back, that you want to dump in your upper back as you come out of that hole. It's not just from the hip shooting back, but your thoracic extensors actually give out. And uh, a lot of people don't understand this is that when you give someone a high bar squat, people feel very different things. Some people are going to feel their, their upper back just really wants to give. Other people are going to feel like their quads just can't produce enough force to stay in position without their hips shooting back really bad. So if you talk to a lanky dude with really weak quads, he's gonna be like, oh man, it's just really hard on my quads. If you talk to someone who has a very weak back but they're very quad centric and they get a lot of uh, forward knee travel, they'll usually oftentimes like the high bar squats and then beyond that, if they do have a complaint about it, it's usually that their upper back gives a little too much. So go read this article to have that explained a little bit more in depth. Now there are some things in there that I don't fully agree with, but overall, I think uh, that article explains quite a bit on the high bar versus low bar. Um, now, when we talk about this from a movement fixing standpoint, uh, if we're, we're trying to, like, if we're in a movement development phase in our training cycle and we're trying to have carryover to our competition squat, which is a low bar squat for most of you, the high bar squat can really uh, shine through in a lot of different ways. Now, again, like I said, for people who have weaker upper backs like Marcellus, this is a great way to not only uh, train the upper back muscles in a squat pattern. So it's one thing to go do some rows, but it's another thing to strengthen those thoracic extensors in a squat pattern. You know what I mean? So this couldn't be any more specific to the low bar squat for getting that carryover that we're looking for from the upper back. However, when you do this, like we were saying in the video, you have to keep in mind that you have to stay in these positions we're trying to train. If you allow that upper back to dump, and again, that's why I was cueing Marcellus through each rep to try to force him to stay in position, you're gonna just strengthen bad position. You're gonna strengthen dumping over in the squat. You may improve it a little bit, but you'll see that you never really fix your problem with that dump. Again, Marcellus, he's someone who every time he squats, especially when his low back kind of tucks under too much because he has some hip flexion issues, his upper back starts to give really quick in the squat. And so we're trying to fix that. And there's really no better way than, than doing the high bar squat for him. Now me, I'm somewhat the opposite. My quads are really weak. My upper back is really, really strong. So when I uh, do a high bar squat, it's like my upper back just stays in perfect position. You'll see me when I do my high bars, I don't topple at all there, but what happens is my hips shoot back really bad because my quads can't keep in that demand. So what I try doing when I'm able to high bar squat and I'm trying to focus on the quads is I'm trying to keep those knees forward a lot. Now, today I was doing it a little bit different. Not only was I trying to keep the knees more forward, but I was also trying to load into my adductors. Now again, this is not something I recommend for beginners. I need you guys to focus more on just general foundational cues. Same thing even with early intermediates. But when you start to get to that advanced level, I think we can take movement patterns and kind of work our, our form around things we're trying to target. So for Marcel, it's a little bit more simple, but it's also the same thing. We're trying to get him to only think about his upper back really while he's squatting and, and make that what he rates all of his RPEs based on. So like he said in his video, if you go watch his video, his upper back would have gave if we went any heavier, even though we probably could have loaded up his high bar squat a little bit more. So he was kind of rating his RP top set and all of his back off work based on his back position. Same thing for me, I was kind of changing my form where I was really starting uh, knees forward in my squat pattern and then slowly rotating out as we go. And it really tensioned those adductors for me and it's a great way for kind of getting everything to click into position. Sorry, I had to fix my fan real quick. So anyway, as I was saying, um, sorry guys, the fan came on in here and it's super loud, so I didn't want to mess with the audio. But as I was saying is, is really I'm loading into those adductors and those quads. Now what the high bar squat can also do is actually teach proper positioning of the scapula. Uh, it can also teach you to properly rotate the hips. And for people who have overextension issues in their low bar squat, this is a great way to get them to train into deeper hip flexion while promoting external rotation and glute activation. So let me explain that a little bit further. Um, 
Oftentimes when people low bar squat, they find that they bend over a little bit more. And when that happens, um, and, and it's okay to actually bend over more as long as that bar is staying over your middle foot, that's just kind of how you have to low bar squat. But usually we can clear that up if we work on some external rotation. Um, but also with that, if, if we have someone who is uh, very prone to overextension in their low bar squat, their back might arch too much or and or someone like Marcellus who his low back tucks under. In both these circumstances, oftentimes the back takes too much load and the glutes do very little. And so what the high bar squat can do is it can kind of neutralize that because you're a little bit more vertical and your core is a little bit more activated from the natural movement. What will happen is you find that you hit that hole without that overextension or that flexion if you brace properly. And you'll find for the first time you might actually get your glutes to activate better. This is actually something Marcellus mentioned today. He's like, wow, I was like shocked how quick that happened because that was another one of the reasons why we have him doing high bar squat is to neutralize his core into that squat pattern and for him to kind of get into a deeper flex position but a little bit more upright, work on the extension in his back, but also kind of open up his hips and get his glutes to actually activate. In his low bar squat, he flexes over in that hole and butt wink so much. And trust me, we've tried all the mobility stuff. He's just kind of naturally built like that. But this is gonna be a good way to kind of get those glutes to fire a little bit more and maybe bring up that discrepancy he's created from low bar squatting over all these years because he really never did too much high bar squatting early on. And if we work on his movement pattern in the low bar and then also get him to actually train his glutes a little bit in this high bar neutral that core out of that flex state this is all going to have carry over to that low bar squat so it's a great kind of way to, to carry that over so really if you're, you're someone at home and you're listening to this and any of these problems whether it's the quad and adductors or whether it's the upper back or whether it's your core neutrality all of these things can be fixed from the high bar squat and there's even more things but what you have to do when you're deciding um, when to implement a special exercise and, and while this is very similar to a comp squat this is kind of a special exercise you want to think about why am I doing this some of you may just be getting out of repetitive movement okay so maybe you don't have any of these issues but you just don't want to comp squat three times a week because it builds up repetitive uh, movement issues I would probably just high bar squat and try to overload it as much as I can and not really worry about this too much as long as you don't have any deviations and that's kind of how I've done it in the past I, you know I've high bar squatted up to like 545 for a pause single and I've really strengthened just an overload standpoint I've done a ton of, of volume work with really heavy loads where I'm just trying to move from point A to point B and kind of work the pattern in this case I'm thinking more uh, movement based more uh, muscular activation and, and fixing some weak points in my adductors and quads that I have and I'm thinking more about like my movement and almost treating it like a bodybuilder exercise in a weird way uh, than I am like a power lifter who's just trying to overload something. So what I guess what I'm trying to say here is if you're at home and you're doing this and you're trying to program this for you, think about what problems you might have that the high bar squat can fix and maybe this is something you can add into your repertoire and it can kind of help you out. And or maybe if you're just trying to get out of repetitive movement, the high bar squat is great at relieving bicep tendinopathy, uh, shoulder issues because you can get under that bar a little bit easier with the scapula. It's really good at just giving the low back a break. Um, it's, it's just kind of like a healthier squat if you're doing a lot of low bar and that's something you've kind of abused in the past. So there's a thousand reasons why I can use a high bar squat. What I'm trying to get you guys to do with this video is just think a little bit deeper and kind of think like, why am I doing this? Because I think so many people say, oh, this is an amazing exercise for your competition squat. Just do this. And people just do it and don't even think why they're implementing it into their program. Uh, and then beyond that, a lot of you guys might not actually need a high bar squat. I do think it's an amazing exercise, but maybe you don't need it for any of these reasons. And you're someone who just does need some specificity or maybe you need to go front squat or pause squat or do one of these other exercises, okay? Um, I'm gonna to try to keep the video a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna cut it there. If you guys have any further questions, leave them down in the comments section. Give the video a thumbs up and share it if you feel like this is some information that can help someone out. It actually really helps me out, guys, if you share my videos, because I only collaborate with like two people on this entire planet. I don't do a lot of collab work, so it really helps the channel out. Uh, and until next time, I'm gonna see you guys later.